As doctors, we're in a profession of care rather than cure. I'm still learning. I should learn as I grow older how to be a better doctor who cares. Always think of how to go for the extra mile in caring for patients. For me as a doctor, I take care of patients who have chronic illness, so they are on long-term follow-up. It's good in a way that I, I can understand them better and also their family background, social background and emotional setup. Little things that I do include calling the patient if they don't attend the clinics and to the extreme that sometimes uh, we do visit patient homes, find out why they default and there were a few successful cases where we actually visited the patient home during lunchtime to encourage them to come back for treatment because they kind of given up. I'm glad that you know at least some of them are doing well after these home visits. Going back to the ward to see them after office hour, catch up with the volunteers and to give them moral support. We started the home ventilation service to fulfill a need. There were, and there still are, patients who are cognitive but who need a breathing machine. In 2008, I met a spinal cord injured patient in his 40s who was completely dependent on the ventilator. He went on to become our first HVRSS patient. Five years later, he is now alive He's, he has rediscovered his role as a husband and a father. We have a few young men in their early 20s with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. These young people become very disabled, wheelchair bound or bed bound, and they need the breathing machine. They also have a weak cough and they need a cough assist device. We see their parents giving of themselves completely for their children. It is very hard. Yes, but these patients want to live on and their parents are willing to do their best. Our journey has not been easy. Everyone in my team has had moments when he or she thought of quitting. However, when we see our patients and their families bravely moving on with their lives, we decide to stay on one more day, one more month, one more year to journey with our patients and their families. We help each other and lift each other up in the moments of weakness and helplessness. So I was I've been coordinating the home medical home visit team. One particular case that came to my uh, knowledge is it was also one of the very first case that we saw an elderly man who has a high amputation on one leg and uh, staying in a one room flat he practically sort of uninterested to go out of the house often he has no other connection with family and when we first entered the, the house the house was in a really a big mess of a lot of dirt and, and cockroaches are running around a lot of unconsumed decomposed food in the fridge it took us a few opportunity to see him a few weeks down the road and see him finally he started to open up with us uh, I remember the very first time when I talked to him really when he opened up with us he was really pouring out his, his uh, fear his, his sadness then he was crying around persuaded him a few times and he finally agreed that, uh, to let us go to his house to do a makeover I don't see this more like, like a job I see this more like a calling in the sense that I, I, I like what I'm doing and I like to help people. There, there are times it's so, so challenging. People can be very demanding. But I guess it's, it's at the end it's also a sense of self-satisfaction because you really find that you, you whatever you do, then then you see that you actually help somebody, you actually change somebody's life. Being, being in the volunteer work itself, it is more of putting what I learned to help people outside my workplace. It takes a lot for, for a person to so the willingness to kind of do voluntary work because you, you must come, this thing must come from the heart. In our daily work, uh, every time we are faced with people in need, and I've learned that instead of asking myself, how should I respond as a doctor? I find that it is more important to ask myself, how should I respond to them as a fellow human being? Simple things in what I do as a fellow human being, it could be a touch on the hand, 
It could be a smile on the face to acknowledge them. It could be a kind word uh, to say that I understand what you're going through. It could even be just sitting with them and listening. And it is these simple things that we do, that we respond to them, that really makes the difference to them. And I would say it makes a difference to ourselves as healthcare professionals as well. I've seen that there are, there are a lot of nurses who are actually very keen on doing community work. And a few nurses who actually went on community mission work with me and they really enjoy themselves. They have that sort of satisfaction, which is quite different from what they get from the work. Even though they come out of their own time and their own money, but they find it worth it. Uh, they thought they are there to bless them, but actually they receive more than what they actually give. One of our Myanmar patients admitted to TBCU in was 75 and then uh, their own sister said that uh, this patient cannot eat our hospital food. So she told me that uh, can bring some our own, I mean Myanmar traditional food and then made her a big black cup bag. So actually I don't know how to cook but I try my best to cook for her. In the end she told me that her appetite come back. And then at the end, she discharged, and then she went back, they sent her back to Myanmar. Uh, a few years already, two or three years, but until now, she never forget me that she, I treat her very well like her own family. So I'm the one like her relative. So until now, she, from Myanmar, she keep on calling me. And then when I went, whenever, whenever I went back to Myanmar, she looked for me whenever I'm, I'm there, la, whenever I'm, yeah, I bet home she looked for me. To me, only small thing. Mm -hmm. If not their support, I I cannot become Boela. Okay. So thank you to all my colleagues and my patients. When I do voluntary work, I, I feel really touched. You know the people there, they really appreciate what you have done and then they travel from so many miles. Some even travel from morning until afternoon then reach our area. Recycle, we every month, second Sunday, we will go to go and collect the, the things from the house. Volunteer worker will distribute the paper, plastic. We will sell to the Kalanguni. Then we get the money we take to do the charity. Then we do mission as well. Now we used to help the poor. I do at the free clinic means I check patient parameter. I, I do it because I'm passionate to do it. Because I, I, I feel I, I did something good for them. So I, that's the job that in the hospital you, you, you cannot get the satisfaction. During the time during the tsunami, when I went down to Sri Lanka to help out in the medical field, and uh, I came across this um, siblings, okay, these siblings, brothers and sisters who were in a refuge camp, and when I spoke to them, and what really touched me was that they said that uh, the day before that they were rich people, they had their parents, they had a big house, and now they are completely without anything, and they are often. And, and that really touched, you know, I realized that how vulnerable life is. We cannot take life for granted. I mean, today you can have everything, tomorrow you might not have anything. So what we have to do is just live day by day, live every day, uh, appreciate what life has. And that's what I come back telling to my kids, always appreciate life, always appreciate what you have and be thankful for what you have and live day by day.